This is the second of two meetings. We had a meeting at the 8.30 service. It's, all, all this is is informational, and this is the second one. Our normal congregational meeting will be December 11th at 10 o'clock. That's when we'll be doing some voting. On the budget, uh, candidates for church council and the proposed call of barium. So I'm gonna have the ushers give out a, a list of those that are interested in, in running for church council and also the proposed 2023 budget. When you take the budget and you look at it and you start looking at line items, if you see a reduction from 2022 to 2023, please note that was by request. Neither the finance team nor the church council reduced anyone's budget. Larry, do we have everyone? Okay, so everyone has a copy of the budget. As I said earlier, on December 11th, 10 a.m. is when the floor will be open for discussion and voting. You also see in front of you a list of candidates for the church office, for the church council, excuse me, and they are Paula Brandel, Kim Kane, Ben Hesley, Melissa Little, Terry Steinert, and Donna Taylor. So the floor is open now. If anyone wants to submit someone else's name to church council, they will be on the list and be eligible for uh, when we vote on December the 11th. Any other names? Hearing none, I'll move forward with the last piece of business. Give out one to each family, if you will. This is, I'll just wait everybody gets a copy so it's easier to kind of look at it and, so I can explain what you got in your hand. If, if you look at the first page of the handout, uh, I wanna thank Heidi Lee and Betsy Smith. That is a rendering of, of what we feel like kind of give you a flavor of what the colibarium would look like. The second page is kind of a quick question and answer. A lot of questions, a lot of answers, and then it's the policy. Take that home and read it. We, as I'm on the committee, we're very excited about the potential of us having a colibarium ministry here at the church. But we will be voting for approval on December 11th. It'd be on the inside. It's going to be in the chapel. We have identified a place for the uh, columbarium. Thank you so much. I'll turn it back over to Liz. Thank you.
in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As called an ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore to declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children forward for the children's message. Carter, I think it's just me and you today. Oh, it's going to be so great, Carter. Like you're limping. Are, are you all right? You, you, you walk like I do, Carter. Huh? Hmm. Hey, so friend, uh, who do you think we're going to talk about? We are. We're going to talk about Jesus today. I feel like it's probably a good day to talk about Jesus, don't you? Yes. I think so, too. Um, so, you know, today is the first Sunday of the church year. Did you know that? I think I did. Yes, it's the first Sunday of the church year, and I feel like that um, I, I love to talk to you about liturgical seasons. Do you know what that is? No, no idea. idea. Yes, what Carter. That could possibly be. Well, we are liturgical does it, does worshipers. Does it have something to do with the flu? I think so, Carter, yes. Uh, I feel like there's a song about it. You want to hear it? Here it goes. 
Okay. Hey, 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 seasons of the year. Hey, 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 seasons of the church year. Advent is blue, 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 blue. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Christmas is white, 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 white. Jesus was born on this night. Hey, 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 seasons of the year. Hey, 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 seasons of the church year. Lent is purple, 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 purple. Ministry and journey to the cross. Easter is gold, 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 gold. Jesus is risen, alleluia. Now the song goes on, of course, because you know, I feel like that the church year doesn't just stop at Easter. Um, you know, even though a lot of us love Easter. Um, but Advent starts our liturgical year. And yes, Carter, it is, you said it right, blue. Because we are preparing for Jesus. And so I feel like, you know, during Advent, it's time for us to get ready. What do you think is the story that we get to hear around Advent? It's all about a little baby in a manger, right? Yes. And it's all like packaged up in a nice pretty bow, right? Like in a manger, swaddling cubs. Yep, yeah, nope. Advent's not like that sometimes. Uh, like today, today, I feel like it's a scary text. Oh, I know, it's Advent. Always Advent 1 and 2 are what we call apocalyptic texts. Do you know what that means? Uh, Carter? Uh, I know an apocalypse. Yes, yeah, bad, right? Yeah. yeah, apocalypse is bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Apocalypse. Probably the opposite of what, do you know what that word is right up there on the blue banner? Hope. Hope. Yeah, I feel like, you know, yes, hope comes in a sweet little baby Jesus. Uh, you're not going to get warm and fuzzies Apocalypse from the... Apocalypse is basically this. If him like buzzes the planet and there's just something attacking it... Yes, Carter. Yes, that's exactly what it is. You're right. But today, you know, because we're going to listen to the good news of God in Christ Jesus and stuff, I'm going to tell you a little bit about God's promises and where it seems scary sometimes, you know what's great about God's promises? Is that sometimes what seems scary, not really that scary at all. Because God loves us. And God, like, wants to love us. And we want to love God. And having our hearts be prepared for Advent is just like another way of saying, oh, it's just time to get ready. You got to get ready to welcome a sweet little baby in a manger in some swaddling clothes because it's coming, whether we like it or not. And so what we can remember this week is we can remember that God goes with us because Jesus is in our hearts. And when we leave this place, they'll know that we are Christians by our love and our action that's how they'll know that we're christians is how we act and how we are with others yes sir why is action a triangle well i but i'm i wanted to try to make an a but you just called my bluff boy it's fine <laughs> it was more like a triangle and it should have been more like an a like you know alpha al alpha a so a stands for action action i feel like like the avengers action for actions so with that do you think you can remember that that now i feel like he's still trying to make the action it's fine um i think everybody can remember that today that we are loved because god loves us and we can good. yes that that's great yeah i feel like there's a church in there somewhere um with that how about we pray okay the lord be with you let us pray. Dear good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for all that you give us, but especially for your Son, Jesus. 
Lord, we know that you give us unexpected things, and those things bring hope to peoples. Lord, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for all that you give us, but we especially give thanks for it is in your son's name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Can Miss Liz get an amen? Amen. All right. And I bet if you go back in the back over there, Carter, when you're heading back to your seat, I feel like Abby will give you a bulletin and some crayons because I didn't bring those up here with me. All right. I, I love how you just got scurries off like, hey, Miss Liz, I would help you up, but look, it's like I've been doing squats for years. The first reading is from Isaiah, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. The visionary message presented in this reading focuses on a future day when God establishes a universal reign of peace. Divine decisions will make war obsolete, and the worshiping community responds, let us walk in the light of that Lord now. Now for the reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream from to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the 13th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 11th verse. Paul compares the advent of Christ to the coming of dawn. We live our lives today in light of Christ's coming in the future. Now for the reading from Romans. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The Lord, or sorry, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus describes his second coming as a sudden turbulent event that will bring about deep change to our normal day-to-day -day lives. Therefore, he urges people to stay awake be aware and wait expectantly because the Son of Man will come unannounced. Now the reading from St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will the coming of the Son of Man. 
For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in which part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, like I told Carter this morning, here we are. It's the very first Sunday of the church year. You know, every year as we start to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus in a cute, neat little bundle of joy, we get scripture texts like this morning. What we really want is sweet little baby Jesus, the prayer from the likes of Will Ferrell and Talladega Nights. But what we get more of is fire raining down. As we begin this Advent season, we are met with texts that should, I feel like that we are met with texts that should make us want to feel all warm and fuzzy inside. But it's kind of like when they start playing Christmas music or right after Halloween. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. This morning, as we hear from Matthew's gospel, it says about the day and hour no one knows. Ominous, right? Let's try to put that into some perspective this morning. Think about the first time you became, say, a parent. Scary, right? But also really great. Think about the first day you met your best friend. The day something important happened to you. You got married. You lost your parent or your spouse or someone else that you really loved. Think about these things and where they're expected for the most part. Things happen in just a blink of an eye. And most of the time, it feels like a lifetime in a moment. The day and hour about things we don't know comes to us in a thousand different ways. It comes as an unexpected gift, an unwanted loss, an unimagined future, or a dream come true. Regardless, you have no way of knowing how or if it would come to be. And you have no way of knowing what exactly it would bring. Despite our best efforts to be prepared for the future, it's a lot more like Murphy's Law. If you expect something bad to happen, will something bad happen or will something good happen? Despite our best laid plans to prepare us, we live in the midst of unknowing uncertainty. There are days and hours that take us by complete surprise, some in good ways and some in not so great ways. 
The day and hour of uncertainty and not knowing of what's to come is what Advent is all about. Advent isn't just a season of the church year. It describes our lives. The seasons of the church year, which I tell our children about all the time, is the lens in which we look through and we see and reflect on our lives. I tell our young people quite often that God gives us promise promise of a new future, promise of things to come, and sometimes little well-known facts, like Advent facts. I'm looking up, I'm looking at Advent facts. One thing is, is that Advent used to be a time of fasting, kind of like Lent, right? Advent, whether in the church or in life, always brings with it the day and hour of unknown. No one knows. We don't know when things are going to happen or where things will happen or at what time. Just like in our first reading that Liz read for us this morning, we don't know the date or the time. We don't know in Isaiah's gospel when it talks about Jesus and the light coming into this world. Our lives are unforeseeable and unpredictable, yet still comes. Like Jesus tells us today in our gospel te text, it's like a thief in the night. Every year when we expect to get the warm and fuzzy sweet baby Jesus, we're met with ominous and intimidating texts. We like to call these texts, like today's text, apocalyptic text, like I talked to Carter about this morning. When we hear texts like we hear today, we tend to understand them more as an end to the world instead of, hey, Jesus is coming soon, so you better get ready. You know, when you go to a seminary and you talk to people about scripture text, a lot of times you people ask your opinion about one text or another text. Texts like today, what we call apocalyptic text, is kind of like most people read the book of Revelation, right? Well, the book of Revelation is a letter. It is a letter. And the writer of the letter is John, not just any, not just regular Joe Schmo John, not a special John. It wasn't John, one of Jesus' apostles. It wasn't, you know, like Paul, the writer of Romans and Thessalonians and uh, First and Second Corinthians. When we talk about these apocalyptic texts, we talk about them like it's the end of the world, it's God smiting us, instead of really focusing on God's promises to us. Uncertainty feels real. The future is unpredictable and we're powerless to control what comes next. I don't know about you, but I am one that loves to like think that I can control everything. It can feel like the world is just getting ready to end in the blink of an eye. Well, in our gospel text for today, one, we go back to those sweet disciples. Oh, the disciples, not the smartest people. And I feel like that Jesus gives us the disciples because we too are his disciples. And sometimes we make mountains out of molehills. You know, these disciples, that's what they did a lot of. They took a molehill, they made it into a mountain, and Jesus climbs that mountain. You know that in the text for today, Jesus never says to the disciples that the actual world is ending. They just assume that it's going to. 
Jesus really isn't predicting the end of the world. He's just talking about how to live in the face of impermeance and changes that are neither predictable or controllable. Impermeance and uncertainty characterize today's gospel reading. It begins with the day and the hour about which we do not know, and it ends with an unexpected hour. And everything in between is about not knowing. Jesus speaks to us about this not knowing five times. We don't know the day. We don't know the part of the night or the hour in which whatever it is will happen. What we do know is that whatever it is, that it will happen. We don't know that what happens to us are just the every ordinary days of life. In the every day so we think of, there's always times of unpredictability. It makes me wonder that if we look at all of these apocalyptic texts with a lens that actually makes them seem worse than they already are. As we look around each one of us every day, when we read the news, I feel like there's a theme. And the theme is bad. It's bad. It's very bad. It's bad. You know, if we focus on those negative things, of course it's going to be uncertain. Then where's the silver lining in the playbook? If we feel chaotic and powerless and think of everything with that lens, then we become chaotic and powerless. You know, in way of youth ministry, I have done a lot of different training events uh, for youth ministers. And in doing training events, the one thing that I always tell youth ministers first is don't panic. Because if you panic, all of the children will panic. And so if you stay cool, all of the children will stay cool. I feel like I tell Pastor John that all the time. Don't panic. It's okay. It will be fine. But if we focus on those negative things, you're always going to live in chaos and panic. When we focus on the things around us that we can't control, that's not really what God wants. What God wants is that God wants to love us. You know, we pointed out, Carter and I pointed out the word on the banner, and the word says hope. The word doesn't say scary, unpredictable, end times. The word says hope for a reason. Because if we focus on the positive things, we'll always find positive things. God's not trying to smite you. Nope. God is trying to love you. God tries to love us all, even when we are unlovable. The question this morning is not about the end of the world, but it's how we live with uncertainty. It's not knowing in the midst of things that we cannot understand. It's about how we live with faithfulness instead of faithlessness. The challenge of our Advent season is to focus, to focus our lens of love, trust, and faithfulness, not to fixate on the day and hour about which we do not or cannot understand. You know, 
Jesus knew that we weren't always the smartest people. He also knew that the disciples were not always the smartest people. And what he tells his disciples this morning is exactly what he tells us. He is telling us and asking us to be on guard, to pay attention, to make good choices, and to live as God's faithful people, which are part of our baptismal promises. That when Pastor John and I stand at, a, at the font with a family, that we make those baptismal promises just as their parents do. And he does that by preparing our hearts for the worst, but always hoping for the best. Remember that cloud and that silver lining kind of thing? Well, this morning, as we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Advent season, there's a song. And it reminds me to be on guard, to be prepared. The name of the song is called While You Were Sleeping by Casting Crowns. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, looks like another silent night. Above your deep and dreamless sleep, the giant star lights up the sky. While we're lying in the dark, there shines an everlasting light. For the king has left his throne, and he's sleeping in a manger tonight, tonight. Oh, Bethlehem, what you would miss while you were sleeping. For God became a man and stepped into your world today. Oh, Bethlehem, will you go down in history as a city with no room for its king while you were sleeping, while you were sleeping. So will you make room for a king? And which will you prepare for? Will you prepare for the scary and uncertain parts in our lives? Or will you focus on the love that God sends to us in a tiny baby, in a king that comes to share with us love, joy, hope, and peace? I know which one I'll focus on, and to that we can all say, thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. During Advent, we wait for the coming Savior, who is our wonderful Counselor. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. We anticipate the one who hears our prayers. Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. We anticipate the one who heals our infirmities. 
cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. We anticipate the one who renews our faith. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. We anticipate the one who ignites our hope. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. Today we light the first candle. The first candle reminds us that Jesus is our wonderful counselor who brings hope to a hurting world. As our counselor, Jesus brings hope in times of despair, compassion in times of sorrow, and healing in times of brokenness. As we begin the season of Advent, let our hope reside in the one who cares about our needs and sustains our faith. wonderful counselor as we begin our advent journey help us to know the abiding hope that comes from knowing you we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen with the people of God in Christ now and in every time let us confess our faith we believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, this only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for the world that years in for a new hope. Please kneel or be seated as able for our prayers. Just to update you a little bit on our hospital report, uh, we're pleased to announce that Mike Abernathy has been dismissed from Atrium Northeast. Um, and uh, Laura was here this morning and we offered our prayers to her as she continues to take care of uh, Mike as he uh, starts to heal. Um, also, we ask you to be in prayer for uh, the Ramsey family still. Uh, Liz, John, and I went to um, um, uh, Laura Chapman's service on Tuesday before Thanksgiving, um, and we ask you to please keep them in your prayers, um, as well as with Bretta Dodson, um, we ask you to keep them in prayer. 
Um, her mother, Vicki Johnson, passed away, and that funeral is tomorrow. Um, it will be at Whitley's Funeral Home. The visitation is from 11 to noon, and the service is at noon at Whitley's Chapel. And also we ask you to uh, be in prayer for Joe Gribble uh, as they mourn the death of Joe's brother in California. Um, and so if you would just keep the, all those folks in your prayers, that will be great. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our times. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redempting and healing work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats. Preserve the wild places and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth, but also in places of other conflicts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of loving kindness, you desire faithfulness of life for ever, everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care. We ask you to pray especially for Mike and Laura Abernathy. We ask you to pr pray for Mabel Brown. We ask you to pray for Andy, Ben, and Robin Ballard, for Becky Brantley, for Carrie Cawthon, Nora Stearman, for the Fishers, Holden, Militia. We ask you to be with Todd Haley. We ask you to be with Bob and Judy Heal. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially those whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give you thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand. Following his resurrection, the Lord Jesus breathed peace upon his disciples. We share in this peace of Christ in the church today. So the peace of the Lord be with you all. Please greet those with words of peace around you. Thank you. No, you're good. Peace. 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 Thank you for that sweet card. <laughs>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by his holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to the birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now receive this benediction. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.